Hello, it is great to be with you today. My name is Cindy Noward and I will be guiding the midweek prayer this week. Here we are together being able to connect in a digital way, which is strange and good at the same time. It feels good knowing that God can connect us together even when we are apart. Just knowing that we are together, spending time with God feels great. So thank you for choosing to join me today. I will be sharing joys and concerns that members of the First United Methodist Church of LaGrange, Indiana have offered for prayer, as well as prayer requests of viewers online. We wanna lift any and all concerns and joys before the Lord. Let us begin our time together with a word of prayer. Our precious Heavenly Father, we have humbly come together as believers and followers of Jesus on this digital space to honor you and to lift our prayers to you. May our hearts be united together in you and may all that we say and do during this time glorify you. We ask and pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I have the one year devotional walk with God. I looked to see what today's devotional is for July 15th and it comes from Job. The scripture is as follows. At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship. Job chapter one, verse 20. I have been reading about Job more than usual during this pandemic, so I find it ironic that God is leading us to talk about him today. Job was a righteous man in the Old Testament, and his life was pretty good. He was a very wealthy man. He had a good family, and he was upright and shunned evil. Job honored, revered, and loved God. He did what he could to protect his family from sin. Life seemed to be going pretty smoothly for Job. However, if you noticed, today's scripture comes from the very first chapter of Job. After de describing him, the book stated that Job had tragic and terrible things happen to him right away. He had thousands of camels and and his livelihood and his oxen and donkeys were stolen. His transportation, his camels were stolen and his children had been killed all on the same day. He didn't know it, but there was more to come. But look at what Job did. After the initial shock and grief, he fell to the ground in worship. What is your response when, you're, when trials are most severe? If you're like most, worship is not your first reaction. In fact, we criticize God, question his goodness, ask pointed questions about why this happened to us. We have self-pity for a long time before we come to a place of true worship. But how was Job able to worship God right away? He knew deep in his heart two essential facts about God. Number one, God is sovereign. And number two, God is good. That never changes. Job knew that absolutely. Job could worship because of whatever was happening to him. It was under the sovereign hand of a really good God. He didn't know why things were happening to him, but he knew who was watching over him was worthy of worship and praise. It goes against our human nature to worship when things are not going well and life is falling apart. Most likely we become angry and accuse God of not living up to his bargain. However, we are not in a position to bargain with God. God is in control of all things. We are not. When we are not sure of what is going on in this crazy world, we can rest assured in the fact that God is merciful steadfast, loving, merciful, all-powerful, and has all things under his control. We can worship, praise, and give thanks to God because we know who he is. He is powerful. He is love. He is good. That is what we know God to be. When we can worship God despite the storm that is all around us, 
It rises our thinking beyond our circumstances and our focus becomes upon our sovereign God. The last few months have been more than challenging. We have dealt with constant change and fluctuation, when, which can make you feel pretty weary and unsure. I know it makes me feel that way. The schedules and procedures we are used to doing, we may or na may not be able to do. We may feel uncomfortable about doing things and being with people that we have to be with because of our job requirements or because we need to go to the store. We are not sure what the next day will bring. Nothing has been the same. We may have experienced illness. We may have experienced loss. We may have experienced death of family and friends. This is such a difficult time that we're living in. We are often grieving, hurting, lonely, and confused. It seems as if uncertainty is a constant. Things that we were sure about before, now we're not so sure if we can rely on them. We don't know how or why things are happening the way they are. In some way, we feel like Job, and we are not sure when this crazy time is going to end. After his trials, God restored Job, and he was greater than before. Like Job, know that this season of difficulty will end and God will see us through. Even if it seems as if God is missing, let us remember like he was there for Job, God is always with us too. When our trials weigh heavily upon us and crisis comes, we must always remember that God is unchanging. God is in control of all things and that he is good. Let us know and declare that God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. This week, as every week, we pray for your submitted joys and concerns. As we recognize each request, we will tie a prayer ribbon onto our prayer board as a reminder of the request during this time. This week, we recognize in prayer Susan Miller requests prayer for Brandon Furness, who we lift up with health concerns. We celebrate the joy of Deb and Scott Chapman's grandson, Gus, whose recent COVID-19 test came back ne negative. Praise God. Evie Schaefer has asked for prayers for her twin sister, Marlene Ryder, regarding health concerns. And also, I ask for prayers for my father, who has been dealing with some pain in the past few weeks. Let us come together and pray. Our Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you to praise you and to thank you for who you are. You are mighty. You are holy. You are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. You are steadfast, faithful, loving, and so good. We thank you and praise you, Lord, for who you are. Give us eyes and ears to see you and, and to hear your voice. God, however, there are times when we are so uncertain and so weak, we just don't know which direction to go. Help to remind us to always look to you when we are lost and weighed down by this world. We ask for peace and comfort for those who have grief and pain from losing loved ones. We ask for healing for those that have injuries or illness. We pray for the doctors to have the knowledge to assist with healing. We pray for healing and hurting hearts in our family, church, and community. 
Heal our state and our country, Lord. Only you know what needs to be done. We give this all to you and place our uncertainty in your hands, for you are good and your ways are perfect. Let thy will be done. May you be glorified now and forever. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to thank you all that I could share with you, and I look forward to sharing with you in our Sunday service online this coming Sunday at 930. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.